Thank you so much for joining us here online at Oma Community Church. We pray that today's service will bring life, love and hope into the heart of your world.
thanks so much for joining us today for the online experience here at the Community Church in Oma. So we're going to follow on with our series on discipleship. This is our, our third week where we're looking at what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ and we're looking at the process of discipleship where we as a church and as followers of Jesus Christ and disciples of Jesus Christ have this incredible opportunity to partner with the Trinity um, and leading people into a relationship with the Father, Son and Holy Spirit and then essentially teaching them to live in the way that Jesus taught his disciples to live. So I want to read to you uh, in a moment from the Apostle Peter's first letter to the church and we're going to go through a couple of verses from the first chapter of his first letter in the hope that we will be encouraged in our walk with God and our walk to God, that we will be encouraged to be the men and the women of God that Jesus died for us to become and to live the life worthy of the sacrifice that Jesus made on our behalf, where he calls us to holiness, where he calls us to a pathway of purpose, and where he calls us to make a significant impact for the kingdom of God in our spheres of influence. So if you want to read along with me today, we're going to read 1 Peter, or 1 Peter, chapter 1, verses 13, right through to the end of the chapter, verse 25. And then I've got a couple of thoughts that I hope will encourage us today and inspire us today, but essentially equip us today to be disciples who make disciples in the name of Jesus, for the glory of the Father, empowered by the Holy Spirit. And so Peter writes this and he says, Therefore, verse 13, chapter 1, Therefore prepare your minds for action. Be self-controlled. Set your hope fully on the grace to be given you when Jesus Christ is revealed. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy, because I am holy. Since you call on a father who judges each man's work impartially, live your lives as strangers here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believed in God who raised him from the dead and glorified him, and so your faith and hope are in God. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for your brothers, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. For all men are like grass, and their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, and the flowers fall. But the word of the Lord stands forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. <clears throat> so Peter, incredible apostle, incredible disciple. Some of you will be familiar with the character and the person of, of Peter. We read in the New Testament narrative that Peter was the first disciple um, to recognize Jesus as the Messiah. We know that from the, the New Testament narrative that Peter walked on water. He's the only man that has been documented outside of Jesus to walk on water. We know that Peter denied Jesus in the build up to the crucifixion. We know that God, Jesus, 
um, redeemed Jesus by giving him an opportunity to testify and recognize who he was after he had resurrected. We know that Peter, if we look in the book of Acts, preached some incredible sermons highlighting the goodness of God, the power of God, the sovereignty of God, the glory of God. And now we see that he also has written some incredible letters to encourage the church, to equip the church, to empower the church, to live the lives worthy of the calling that they have received, to be the people that Jesus died for us to become, to be the church, the bride that actually Jesus wants us to be. And so <clears throat> incredible, incredible rich tapestry that we've just looked at, all kind of encompassed around Peter's encouragement to us to be holy. A.W. Tozer, in his book, The Knowledge of the Holy, writes this. He says, what comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. The history of mankind will probably show that no one has ever risen above its religion. And man's spiritual history will positively demonstrate that no religion has ever been greater than its idea of God. Worship is pure or base as the worshipper entertains high or low thoughts of God. So for this reason, Tozer goes on to say, the gravest question before the church is always God himself and the most per per pertinent sorry, fact about any man is not what he at any given time may say or do but what he in his deep heart conceives God to be like. We tend by a secret law of the soul to move towards our mental image of God. And so the kind of the undercurrent of Peter's writings, you know, the, the motivation behind Peter's writings is really being driven by his desire for us to recognize God as Messiah. For us to recognize Jesus as, as the Christ, as the one true living God, and then to allow everything that we do to flow from that recognition and that understanding of who God is and who God was and what it means for us to be in relationship with him. Peter walked the earth with Jesus and he wants us to recognize what is available to us as we walk the earth with Jesus as well. Eugene Peterson uh, encapsulates verses 13 to 16 in what we just read like this in the message. He says, so roll up your sleeves, get your head in the game, be totally ready to receive the gift that's coming when Jesus arrives. He says, don't lazily slip back into those old grooves of evil, doing just what you feel like doing. You didn't know any better then, and now you do. And as obedient children, let yourselves be pulled into a way of life shaped by God's life. A life that is energetic and blazing with holiness. For God said, I am holy, you be holy. So we believe, I believe, that God is holy. That means that he is set apart. That he is pure. That he is blameless. That he is perfect. And that he is complete. And that is what he calls us into. And that is what he makes available to us. We know that if we read the letter to the Hebrew church in 1010. That by Christ's sacrifice we have been made perfect and holy. So in other words when God looks at us he sees us. Through the lens of a son, perfect and holy, and then through the power of the Holy Spirit, he sets us apart, he makes us pure, he makes us blameless, he makes us perfect, and he makes us complete through the process of sanctification, allowing us to become Christ-like. And so I think that we make the mistake in the 21st century in the church of looking at holiness purely through that lens, Forgetting that yes, there's a transformation process that takes place. But as we are being sanctified, as we are being renewed, as we are being made new, as we are born again. There's also then an onus on us through our holiness to live a life that is holy. And I think for so many of us, we make the mistake of thinking that God is only interested in what we don't do. And we forget that actually our holiness 
God is interested in what we do, do as well. And God calls us to love. He calls us to sacrifice. He calls us to service. And he calls us to dedicate our lives to him in service. Through sacrifice, in love and with love. Filled with his love. So when Peter is writing to the church, and when Peter is saying, therefore, prepare yourself, or when he's saying, so roll your sleeves up, as Eugene Peterson says, there's this understanding that when the early church would have read this for the first time, that when they were saying, get ready, be prepared, it would have been in the context of their reading and their writing and their understanding that there was work to do, and that they would be being prepared for the work to do that they would have been rolling their sleeves up or pulling up their their socks or rolling up their sleeves in the best possible sense to get ready for the task in hand and so for us as disciples it's not enough for us to think about our behavior in such a way that we think of the things that we can't do or that we shouldn't do but we should also in our holiness as disciples be preoccupied with thinking about the things that God wants us to do as well and when we think about the things that God wants us to do when we think about the lives that God wants us to live we got to go back to the teachings of Jesus and if we can look in Matthew chapter 10 verse 8 Jesus is very clear about what he expects for us in our holiness Matthew chapter 10 verse 8 says this heal the sick raise the dead cleanse those who have leprosy Drive out demons. Freely you have received, so freely give. And so the hallmarks, the life of a disciple, is marked with those who are preoccupied with praying for the healing of the sick. For those who are preoccupied with the supernatural activity of raising the dead. For those who are preoccupied with reaching out to the disenchanted disenfranchised the disconnected and to cleanse those who have leprosy and for those who are preoccupied with the supernatural activity of driving out demons and then those who are generous in their giving and who are committed to a life of giving to love to sacrifice to service and to dedicate their lives to the things of God in the name of God, all for the glory of God, empowered by the Spirit of God. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, and drive out demons. Then to give generously with everything that we have, because we have freely received. Paul says it, and or sorry, Peter says it in his writing. He said, "What we have been given has been given to us not because of our ancestors, because of the goodness of God. What we have received was not given to us because of silver. It was given to us because of the goodness of God. And through the goodness of God, God asks us to release His goodness into those around us by living holy. We are called to be different. We are called to be set apart, but not just for the sake of being different, and not just for the sake of being set apart." but actually so that we can be disciples who make disciples transforming engaging living loving serving and dedicating ourselves to God not just in prayer not just in worship but through service as well do you know that God actually measures love through sacrifice we're told by the words of Jesus that greater love has no man than anyone who would lay down his life for his friends. And so God is looking to us as his disciples to serve him through the service of others in such a way that they can be exposed to the kingdom of God, the goodness of God, and receive that free gift of salvation that we have been given through faith in Jesus Christ. And now we get to go and heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cleanse those who have leprosy, and to drive out demons. We see in verses 18 through to 21 that we have been given this incredible, beautiful thing through faith in Jesus Christ. And because of that, our faith is in Jesus Christ. We're told if we look at the scripture of what we've just read that our future is in Jesus Christ. Our hope is found in Jesus Christ and that our future is right you will have heard me say this over and over and over again that for oma 
for the church, for us as individuals and for us corporately, our future is brighter than the darkness of our past. I believe with all of my heart that that is the message that God has given his church, that we have got a bright future, not just in this life, but in the next as well. That we find ourselves situated locally right now, knowing that our faith is in Jesus Christ as disciples, our hope is in Jesus Christ, and as a result of that, our future is brighter than the darkness of our past. A number of weeks ago, um, actually, not even a number of weeks ago, in November of 2020, I felt compelled to go and record a message that we broadcast to the people of Uma um, on all of our social networking sites. And I, I'd just like to revisit that today to remind us of this concept, this belief, this ideology, um, this faith that I have that our future is brighter than the darkness of our past. So I'm currently standing outside the Tyrone County Courthouse. It's in the heart of Oma on the main street in the town. About nine years ago, I had a dream. And I woke up in the middle of the night and after having this dream, and in the dream I saw myself dressed as a town crier, delivering a message to the town and the people of Oma. And the message was real simple, our future, is brighter than the darkness of our past. And as I kind of came to terms and wrestled with the reality of that dream, I just felt God say to me in that moment, whilst we were still living in Derry at the time, if you go, the people will come. And so there's something prophetic in, in, in that statement and that there was a promise from God and I just really feel that I just need to stand here on these steps tonight and just say to Oma that our future is so much brighter than the darkness of, of our past. And the promises of God over this town are to prosper it, to add value to it, to strengthen it and to release his power through it. And so I believe with all of my heart that God loves Oma. I believe with all of my heart that God wants to use the community church in Oma to bring his life and his love and his hope. So I'm standing here um, just as a, an act of surrender and an act of obedience just to say, Hey Oma, God wants you to know our future is so much brighter than the darkness of our past. And if you're looking for hope, if you're looking for life, if you're looking for love, you can find it in the person of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ wants to release it through his church and there are many churches in our town but I happen to have the privilege of leading the community church in Oma and I would love to connect with you I would love to speak life into your world to speak love into your world and to speak hope into your world so hey look check us out on Facebook check us out on Instagram uh, check us out on our YouTube channel or drop us an email drop me an email at Tim at omacommunitychurch.com. Hey, be blessed, stay safe, God loves you. So we've seen that our future is brighter than the darkness of our past. We have looked and we have seen that what God wants us to do is to live a life that is holy, which is not just preoccupied with what we can't do, but actually what, but what he wants us to do as well. Raise, healing the sick, raising the dead, cleansing those who have leprosy and driving out demons. We also see in verses 22 through to 25 the significance of the truth of God. And so it says this, now that you have purified yourselves, in other words, now that you're beginning to live holy by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for your brothers, love one another deeply from the heart, for you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. This is a theme that's going to come up over and over and over again as we are on this discipleship journey, as we are being disciples and as we are making disciples, that we are finding 
our truth through the word of God and that we are living out that truth because of the word of God and that we are connected to truth who is Jesus. He's the way, the life and the truth and we're told that no one gets to the Father except through him. So Peter goes on and he says this, all men are like grass and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fail but the word but the word, let me say it again, but the word of the Lord stands forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. As disciples, and we looked at this last week in much more detail, as disciples of God, we are readers of the word, we're listeners of the word, we are learners of the word, and we are doers of the word. And I think for many of us, we make the mistake of thinking that we need to know all of the Word of God in every detail and it actually prevents us or creates a, a disconnect and a fear, an unnecessary fear um, where we feel unqualified to talk about the Word of God because we don't know it from in its entirety from start to finish and we don't understand it in its entirety from start to finish. But I, here's what I know is that God is a God of revelation. And that God wants to reveal his truth. God wants us, wants us to reveal his truth as it is revealed to us in such a way that we can live the lives that he is calling us to live. And that so we can, we can stand on a firm foundation. Let me read you this. Matthew chapter 7. Therefore everyone who hears these words of mine. In other words, this is the word of God we're talking about. For us today, it's the Bible, the Old Testament, and the New Testament. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. So the Word of God has an application for us in every area of our lives. The Word of God is living, breathing, and active and useful in every situation. I'm sure I have said this before. God has got something to say about everything and we can build a platform of our, for our lives. We can be disciples by getting into the Word, by learning the Word, applying the Word, and then sharing the as well. And so in the community church here in Oma, we have a real simple tool that we use which is called the SOAP method for reading the Bible. And so I would encourage you this week to go get yourself a pen and a piece of paper and open up a book of the Bible and every day just ch encourage yourself to read one chapter of that particular book that you've chosen to read and as you read it observe what you are reading and ask the Holy Spirit to be intentional with you in highlighting just a portion of what you've read to you in such a way that you can apply that to your life and as you apply that to your life and as you seek to be transformed by what you've read and seek transformation through what you've read ask then through prayer for God to help you to apply what you've just observed from the scripture. And I believe with all of my heart that as you do that, you will move to new levels of intimacy with God and that you will begin to build strong, firm, solid foundations for your life as a disciple that will actually equip you to go and make disciples as you share what you've observed, as you share the transformation that you've seen, as you've applied it, and through the prayers that you have prayed, you have seen God move. So let's begin through consistency and through devotion to set ourselves apart through the word of God in such a way that we can be holy and so that we can remove things from our lives that are not of God and so that we can implement things into our lives that are of God so that we can extend the kingdom of God in Jesus name. Amen. Hey, stay safe. If you'd like to know more about becoming a Christian or more about OCC, feel free to use the contact information below. If you have any prayer requests, praise reports, physical needs or pastoral needs, please reach out and we'd love to help you in any way we can.